I just was listening to this song on repeat over and over again and just getting like really happy and really excited. And I was like, I have to make a piece about this. I have to do it. Um, so that one's more of a, like an homage to that song. But when David and I were talking about concept and like how our work relates to one another, we like, we came to a consensus that we can find like a little glimmer within each of our work. Like there's that saying like a glimmer of hope and that's something that we need right now in this time. And as the um, statement says, like it's either something that can be faint or something that's shining bright immensely. So a glimmer is more like an idea or a concept rather than it being like the physical thing that you see. The both of our processes from what we've discussed is uh, within that, that process we're kind of searching for some sort of truth or truth maybe not being the word but but some sort of glimmer of um, I don't know just a, a something that we're working out within our process and, and that end product is sort of that, that glimmer or the search for it um, that's what it was for me um, I think both of us to, to an extent mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to define, which is why the um, statement is, in a way, kind of vague. But I see it as something that anyone can come in and take as much as they need from what they're looking at and um, apply their own thing to it. It's also kind of that, that psychological process that I, that I enjoy of navigating the brain fog and excavating ideas out of it and I think that it ties into memory and the way memories are formed in your brain and always kind of being revised and I, and I kind of I think that ties into uh, or at least I've made it into a comment that I can enjoy. Um, well I'd have to say like my intuitive nature and my process is like I'm going back into my um, childhood and thinking about all of the moments where these objects like existed. They, ex they existed within the same plane um, as in contrast to them like other like, n like unsavory, not so great things were happening. And I select my materials by like going to places that I know or that I've been known, like going to the beauty store and buying like three for one packs of barrettes and buying bubbles and uh, $1.99 packs of Kangle on hair and I'm just gathering all of these materials like that I know so well and I know how to work with them because I, even to this day, still work with them. I wear the things all the time. I set it up in such a way where it's impossible for me to ignore and it's harder to get distracted by like a television, which I don't have, or food or, or whatever you get distracted from when you're at home, right? Um, so I cover my bedroom and all the projects in every corner and I have a, a pallet somewhere where I don't step on it and it's easy to... <laughs> just continuously stare at my stuff no matter where I look and then something clicks and I go, oh, let me grab my palette and then do this thing quick and that's my process. Yeah, like this, like this area with this like hoof, mm. um, it definitely reminds me of a lithograph, which like while I was in school, Stone lithography was like my favorite form of print making, um, just because the stone is very forgiving and you can apply as much material as you want on top of it, or you could literally like put material on top of it and like scratch away and create negative space. Mm -hmm. 
but that reminds me, this area just like reminds me of a lithograph so much because you can get like picturesque and like super detailed with it. But at the same time, like you just have like a couple of marks that are like, you know, defining what it is. And I don't need any more details, um, any more marks to, you know, tell me what it is. Because I'm satisfied with it enough knowing what it is just by a little, little bit of dashes. Well, it was, it was a, a spray and a dash. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, like, and this is really weird, like, I like working big so then I can make mistakes and then, like, I can, like, cover up those mistakes. But with, like, that drawing, it's, like, pretty tight and, like, everything is, like, super detailed, which is kind of the opposite of my personality in a way, but my background is printmaking, but even when I was doing printmaking, um, I didn't really make tight drawings. I, you know, learned the, found, like the fundamentals of each printmaking practice, and I um, allowed myself to make mistakes so I would like figure out like oh if I throw some acid on it or if I like uh, put denatured alcohol on this thing or this thing like um, a natural mistake would occur and I would use that mistake um, as a drawing and I what I would do was I had multiple multiple matrices in different forms of printmaking, and I would bring them together, and that to me was more like drawing. Uh, and like, I think printmaking, especially stone litho and uh, intaglio, like you're thinking about materiality and the viscosity of the ink, mm -hmm. and, and okay, what can I put on top of that, or is that going to work, or you know, I'm, I'm burnishing this plate to get all the Bullshit off. Or you're doing like Men in Noir, which is like the retractive method where you put black on the entire surface or a shape of black onto the matrix and then you just scratch away and you're like trying to figure out like how much do I scratch away and like mm -hmm. what tool do I use in order to make the certain type of mark that I want to scratch into this thing. It forces you to think about like like in a, a creative problem solving kind of of way where you, you're, you're given this this problem and you have to use well what tools do I use to arrive at what I'm trying to do so, and it's it's a fun it's a fun uh, it's a balance where you know we're both working intuitively but we're also taking these very nuanced experiences with Printmaking or or more uh, more structured technical uh, processes. Like it, it's really helpful to have um, a physical thing to project your thoughts onto and literally hold it and place it in different places, which speaks to. Like my process too is literally I'm like I have to be very physical with my work in order to get the expression out. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. With both of ours, we have this um, this maybe dialogue with ourselves about. With your work, I think it brings out the melancholiness that I feel like when I'm looking at my work, it lacks um, to other people that are not like a part of.
of my world or like being a black person, I think your I think that mel melancholy like is more readable, and I think it helps like complement my work, and even like brings all of our work together. I know I think there's there's a maybe central truth to to throw flowers on it. Mm -hmm. Or it's like throwing flowers on it is the metaphor. Like whatever your flower is. Yeah.